Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. Caught wife cheating day before anniversary. Since the posts have been removed, here's a brief update on what's happened since the previous day, followed by a few more details. Thank you all again for your assistance. I slept at a friend's house the night before D-Day. Wife pays a visit to sons in his wife's house. Both children are aware that their mother was evicted due to an affair, but no more information is available. Sad. In the morning, take the dog to the cabin. Stay till Monday if possible. Report to the office on Monday. And then start making phone calls. Banks, credit unions and other financial institutions are examples of financial institutions. Call the lawyer I use for my company, and he will recommend a divorce lawyer. I phoned her and scheduled a meeting with her for Thursday. She says exactly what I want to hear, so I hire her. Close professional buddy, I talk with my human resources manager and tell her everything. She recommends someone for IC, so I call and make an appointment. I've seen her twice already, and both times have been helpful. A week after D-Day, son calls and says it's odd having mom in their little apartment and begs that she can come home. I'm calling it quits. She has returned. It's Saturday, yet I'm already on my way to the cabin. To emphasize how much I didn't want to be near her, it was below zero entire weekend, with night lows in the minus 20 to minus 25 range. On Mondays, I drive directly to work. People at work love my lab, and he is often spoiled. I stay late, get home, and can't take the thought of looking at her. Go down to the basement and watch TV till she comes down and asks if we can talk about it. I inform her that I am not prepared and that she should leave me alone while she is here. Fry. The human resources manager inquires about my well-being. Lousy, I tell her that I have been sleeping on the couch or chair in the basement. She recommends that I get a new bed, which is a terrific idea. I'll go get one. Delivery is scheduled for Saturday. I thought of destroying the old one, as others suggested, but I don't want to clean up the mess. On Saturday, I go to work and wait for the call that Ruck would be there in 30 minutes. While I wait for the delivery folks, I walk out and grab two subs. I tell them I'll pay for their lunch and give them each dollar twenty-five in exchange for doing me a favor. Leave an old mattress against a nearby tree and return it at the end of the day. They are bewildered, but I ask that they give me five minutes. They'll get before they come. I go in, remove the bedding, and something clicks that I need to investigate. I put wife cheated in our bed in bold letters on the mattress with a can of blazing orange spray paint that we use to identify properties we're working on. Guys put it on and lean against the tree. My wife afterwards complains that they did not remove the old one, which I tell her they would return for. I don't think she knows what I did. On Valentine's Day, she tries to be all romantic and a delicious meal that I don't eat. Attempts to initiate intimacy, I tell her that even if she were the last woman in the earth, I would neff her. We don't make love, she says. I inform her that since she decided to eff her boss, we haven't made love. I don't know what to say to characterize her expression. She enters the kitchen, trying not to cry. I suppose this is as good a time as any to welcome her inside Alar and encourage her to have a seat. I ask her whether she wants to divorce and move on, which I realize is a bad decision, or if we should attempt to repair this. She tells me that she is willing to go to any length to make things right, to make up for what she has done to me. I'm not sure how she'll make it up to me, but I tell her she has to tell the rest of the family before we can try to fix anything she agrees. That was the most recent update to be removed. 2 17 That night my mother, my father had been gone for three years, her parents, sister, and brother-in-law all came over. We're all seated in LR, and I'm doing my best to keep as far away from her as possible. They begin with, what's wrong? We love you and everything will be okay, as if someone is gravely sick. I look her in the eyes and warn her that this story will not tell itself. Her father looks at me with eyes that seem to be screaming oh no, as if he knows what's going to happen. I have to give her credit. She wept her way through it, spilling her guts even when I walked in on them in our bed. Someone say anything. She says after a long tense silence. I say what they're supposed to say. You're a horrible person. You've hurt me more than you know. You've ripped my heart out. You've thrown away 29 years of our life and harmed our family, not to mention what you two jerks have done to his family. Was the actually so great that it was worth it? I just kept going, all the wrath, hatred, and betrayal that had been building up inside me bursting. I had no clue I could be so judgmental. Enough. 
Her mother finally exclaims. No, she says, she deserves it all, and she her way up the stairs. Mom rushes up to chase her down, but Dad says no, leave her alone. She has to suffer for a while before this goes better. We talk for a while, and they provide encouragement and tell me that if I need anything, I should just ask. I've been in IC, and I feel I'll be okay, but I appreciate your concern. I tell them that I still adore her and that she will need them more than I do. I retire to bed and get the best night's sleep I've had since D-Day. I stroll into the guest room before I leave the following morning and discover she didn't sleep and has been crying all night. I feel that for the first time since D-Day, the gravity of what is happening has really hit her. I feel that notifying her family and letting me go off on her helped her break out of the affair fog. She seemed to be sincere in her repentance. When I tell her we need to chat, she listens more than she speaks. I explain that I'm 99% leaning toward divorce, but I'm still holding on to the 1% life raft. That if at all possible, she should do what I ask in order to help me get over this. She claims she will do anything as long as she is not required to do anything right now. I recall telling her a tale I told her after my father died. My father taught me when I was 17 that you would meet misfortune in life, but how you deal with it will tell more about you than the adversity itself. Under no circumstances should you make critical decisions when you are miserable. Hey, Dad, whatever, I thought at the moment. I wish he was still here so I could tell him I was actually listening. I begin to weep. She rises up and gives me a hug. I don't reciprocate it, but it feels great, which frightens me. She sits down once again, and I tell her she has to leave. If I see her every day, I won't be able to recuperate. We have to go to North Carolina. She accepts and inquires if there is anything more she can do. I tell her I'm too upset to think straight right now, and I'll leave it up to her to figure out what else. On my way to work, I call my lawyer and ask if I may see her today. We get a cup of coffee since she's on her way to work. I explain her about the 99-1% situation, and so forth. If I go that path, I'll have her draft divorce papers to get things started. She suggests that if I have the time and the means, I locate an apartment for my wife and pay for the first month's rent. That if it goes all the way to court, it will reflect my willingness to seek a peaceful conclusion. I agree, and she assures me that she will have something for me to evaluate by Monday. When I get at work, I call a real estate broker with whom we've done a lot of business in the past. Inform him of the circumstance and the assistance I need. He claims to know a reputable rental agency and will put me in touch with him. He calls and says he'll start looking and get back to me. He returns the call with an appropriate choice in terms of cost, location, and so on. I pay a visit to the property manager and pass them a check for the remaining months of February and March, as well as the deposit. When I go home, I tell my wife that I found her an apartment, paid for it, and that she has to meet the manager and sign the lease. It's just a six-month lease, so that's a plus. She is surprised that I relocated so quickly, and I explain that I wanted her to keep away from our sons. While she's gone, I call a few movers. Thankfully, it's the middle of the month, and they can come on Saturday. When she gets home, I tell her I'm done with movers and question her about why he hasn't asked her about money. I told her that I had canceled credit cards, removed my half of our joint account, and canceled my debit card since she appeared bewildered. When she says she doesn't blame me, she seems angry. She hasn't needed to spend anything since she hasn't gone anywhere or needed anything throughout her time with our sons and at home. I also hear that she called her employer and asked for a leave of absence, claiming personal reasons. They allowed her to take her paid vacation before beginning her leave of absence. Friday, I tell her she may take anything she needs for her new apartment, as long as she leaves something for me and not anything from the basement, as well as a few family heirlooms in my new bed. I also inform her that I'm willing to try out for MC, that she find three different ones, and I will choose the one I feel will be the greatest. On Saturday morning, I leave early and return to a half-empty home, including the television. That's okay, I'd like a bigger one anyhow. My friend still has my liquor, so I came to a halt and retrieved my favorite bourbon, which I am now sipping while writing this. Please accept my apologies for the length of this piece, and thank you for reading all the way to the end. I'm going to the gym tomorrow, preparing my favorite chili and shopping for a new television. I'm sure I'll have something more to say later.